Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the final session of our Solid Edge webinar series <clears throat> brought to you by Design Fusion. I'm John Pearson, and I'll be walking through the presentation today with you. Today's presentation is on just basic draft creation. And just a quick overview, this is rudimentary training and um, designed for anyone who does not know Solid Edge focusing on managers, supervisors, uh, who want to learn a little bit about uh, what their staff is doing, some new employees, a great launch point for them, any prospects who want to see the capabilities, plus uh, any other interested individuals. Again, this does not replace the fundamental course. It's designed to introduce you to the basic capabilities of Solid Edge. At the end of this course, you'll be able to go through some very basic tasks and be better prepared to do the self-training tutorials or attend our fundamentals course. Today's section is on uh, the basic draft. Um, and as you can see, it's the last of our series of sections, uh, sessions, I should say, if you want to catch up or if you happen to miss any of the previous sessions you can go to our web page at designfusion.com click on the covid19 response link in the top corner and click here and it'll take you into all the previous webinars these will be on our web page probably till the end of the month at least and then uh, they'll be uh, taken down so make sure you catch up sooner than later Again, it's going to be a PowerPoint presentation with embedded demonstrations and or videos. At the end of the session, the user will be shown a page of downloadable activities or tutorials, as well as some alternate sources, uh, um, links, if you will, for even more information. There will be a Q&A at the end of this session, so please save your questions till then. And as I've already mentioned, the presentation is being recorded for rebroadcast. So as I said, today's session is on basic draft creation. And this is our fourth environment that we've looked at through these sessions. And this one has an extension of DFT for draft. Now, when you first go into the draft, you wanna set up your global settings. And this can be done by going into the Solid Edge Options dialog and then going to the Drawing Standards. And here you can set up your various drawing standards. Uh, the key here is if you're using metric and are in North America, you're gonna to wanna to change that to third projection right here because the metric default is the European default of first angle projection. And in North America, we're using third angle. So you wanna switch that, save that in your template. So the global settings, uh, as I said, can start here. We can also have, you can lock down dimension styles and edge displays. If you're already working for a company that has Solid Edge and you're new to it, they probably have this already set up for you. To create a new sheet, we give you the option inside of the system. All you have to do is click here to add a new sheet and then you can do a sheet setup. So let's have a quick look at this. So we'll go into our draft template. I'm using a default template here. And if I go to my options and go to my um, drawing standards, you'll notice that this, because I opened it in metric, it is uh, set up as first. So I'm probably gonna change that to third. I can go in and check my dimension style, my edge displays, um, various settings like such. So I'm gonna say okay to this, apply and okay, because I made that one change. Now I, would, I don't wanna have to do that every single time. So I would probably go up and save this and overwrite the old template and save it with the new one. Now, if I go, and you'll notice it comes in with a single sheet. Let me just do a quick run through here. If we go to um, 
the view tab, you'll notice we have background working in 2D model sheet. And we have the same down here, 2D model sheet working in background. Where Whenever it says like sheet one here, this is what we call your working sheet. You'll notice there's, you can't select any of these uh, toolbars or anything like that. That's because they reside on the background sheet. So in this one, I have the working sheet. I actually have four different background sheets set up. If I go to a background sheet, I know I'm on the background sheet because it tells me with the background watermark here. This is where your administrator, if you're working for a larger company or whoever sets Solid Edge up, or if you're gonna be setting it up, here's where you're gonna set up your, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, borders, sorry, it's Friday morning, borders and your tables and your um, logos and various um, text, whatever information you want to put in here that is not gonna be changed by the user. And this is set up on a background sheet. Now, when the user goes in and sets up his sheet, we'll go to sheet setup right here you'll notice that he can choose the background sheet that he wants. And by doing so, if I say don't show it or don't use a background, I get a blank sheet. But if I go in here and say use the background, then this is put on there. Now, th again, this is for stuff that you don't want the user to be messing with or deleting or changing. Uh, if you are, my age or a little bit older, you may remember the old draft boards that we used to use. And on here, we would set, send a, get a printer to print on our large draft sheets, this type of information, so we didn't have to draw it in every single time. And we get stacks of these printed pages with this information on it. So this is, is sort of your, um, your predefined uh, and non-changeable information is put on your background sheet. The other sheet is your 2D model sheet. Now your 2D model sheet is your 2D design area. And this is um, where you can go in and draw 2D drafts, or sorry, 2D design. And you have the same sketching tools that you have uh, from um, the part environment or the sheet metal environment. You can go in and you can even create alignments. So uh, for example, I want to uh, align this endpoint with this endpoint, this endpoint with this endpoint. You can place dimensions on there just like you did in the part or sheet metal sketch environments. And um, you know, you could, you'll you notice here that if I go in and change the value here to say 300, they adjust because they're associated because of the alignment. So you can do this type of work, all your 2D designs, just like a, the model space in AutoCAD, for example. If you download the free Solid Edge 2D from the web uh, page, this is what you'll be designing in, in your 2D environment. Let's go back and turn off the uh, 2D um, model view here. And we'll go back into our sheet. Now, again, as I was saying, you can control those here. Uh, you can set a sheet scale. In the sheet setup, you can pick the size of sheet that you wanna work with. You even have custom sheets here, your sheet scale. You can give it a name. Um, and as I said before, you could work with background sheets. All of, um, and, and all of this is the same for every single sheet and you can have numerous sheets here. There's no limit to the number of sheets. You simply click on it and it adds a new sheet and you can have different setups. The only limitation I guess would be how much memory your system has or your graphic card has that can handle it. If you wanna delete a sheet, you go up and hit delete. You can reorder them and so forth. Lots of options in here. Um, as always. So uh, actually, let's just move this out of the way now. So that's how you set up sheets. Now, ob obviously, the object here is to take our 2D models and convert them into um, 
We'll take our 3D models and convert them into 2D draft sheets for the manufacturers or uh, customers or whoever we're sending them to. Uh, there is a big push on lately to use more electronic um, information. So these can be uh, transferred uh, or saved as PDFs, for example, or even um, sent just as a uh, electronic file to save paper. But still, a lot of people like to print out these sheets and keep their records. So we allow that, of course, as well. Here's the different types of views that we can generate. Um, so we'll just quickly walk through the type of views and then we'll do a demonstration of them. So when you create your initial view, you're going to use the most common way is to use your drawing view wizard. The drawing view wizard uh, opens up a select model dialog and you select the model that you want to uh, bring into your draft and that can be a sheet metal model, a part model or an assembly. Take note of the options when you select it. It gives you some uh, different selection types. Uh, for example, if you want a top level assembly, remember you can pick top level assembly to help you filter. The first view you put down, um, it's going to allow you to uh, place additional views like a principal view. So if I have this view, I place it, it's going to kick into principal view for me. I can also launch principal view at any time, so I can drag it out. So if I have this, I move my cursor this way. If this is the front view, I'm going to get a right view. If I go this way, I'll get a left view. If I move it downward, I'll get a bottom view or a top view. So it'll generate those views for you uh, just by moving your mouse button using the principal view command. I'm going to demonstrate these all in a minute just so you can see them. With the auxiliary view, basically what it wants you to do is define your fold line. So you can define your fold line in two ways. You can pick an edge and drag off, or you can pick two points and drag off. And this view will come off normal to your fold line. If you want to create a section view, you first have to create a, a cutting plane. Now this cutting plane can be created using our cutting plane command. You select this and then you select the view that you want to have your cutting plane reside in. This will actually open up in this view and allow you to go in and draw any cutting plane. When you exit, you'll there will be a big red X to exit the cutting view. And then it's going to ask you for your um, cut side, which, uh, which side are you going to be viewing from, for example. Once you've placed your cutting plane, you can then select the section view. Click on the cutting plane and drag off the view. The, the view comes off normal to the cutting plane that you selected. Now there's an ongoing debate uh, in the industry whether or not if you have a transition of line here in your cutting plane, should you show those lines or should you not? It, it, Every time I do teaching, there's always a split. It seems that some people show them and some people don't. Solid Edge doesn't take sides in that argument. We give you the option to do either or. And you can do this by setting this up in your edge display or right clicking, going to your property view and setting it there. So if you wanna show transition lines, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. Detail view. Detail view is basically three clicks. You put, pick the center of your view, the diameter of your view, and then reposition where you want the detail view to show up. Um, that's using the default method. There's also a defined boundary, so you can create any shape for a detail view, a rectangle, a square, a triangle even if you want, or any odd polygons type shape you can create. Broken views, we allow you to go in and create broken views. Uh, you can either use the icon on the ribbon bar. It's also attached to the um, right mouse click uh, if you're in uh, a 19 or 20. And uh, you can go in and create out uh, 
broken views when you're dealing with extremely long components. Broken out section view, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll be able to go in to find a boundary, to find a depth and create a broken out section view. With the broken out section views, you also have the ability to edit them as well. So let's have a look at this. Let me bring up uh, my solid edge here. And I'm actually gonna close out of this and I'm gonna open up a new template and I have one set up for my demo here. And you'll notice in this uh, template, I've set up four views or sorry, four sheets. I've given them each their own name and they each have different background or there's three different background sheets just to show you a variety. Um, so let's start at the basics. We'll go in, click on our drawing view wizard, and we'll select a part to bring in. And you'll notice the part comes in by moving just the scroll wheel, I can change the scale or I can change the scale here. Notice as soon as I place that, I'm put into my principal view command. So I can create multiple views. Uh, let's undo this. Another way of doing this is going into the drawing view wizard, selecting the part we wanna place and going over to the drawing view layout option here. Here I can go in and say, I wanna place, my main view is gonna be my front view and I want to add a top and a right view to this. Notice we can add up to eight additional views for a total of nine views can be placed in a single placement. I'm going to say OK to this. And I'm going to go and place these three views in a single command. Now, if you come from the AutoCAD world, often I ask AutoCAD users, how long did it take you would it take you to draw these three views as you see them on the screen? And I usually, depending on the skill of the AutoCAD user, I get anything from a half hour to an hour and a half or more. And notice to make this model is less than five minutes of model time and within 30 seconds you can drop these. So the old myth that you can draw quicker in 2D than 3D does not apply when you're talking about mechanical drawings. Let's go in and create some auxiliary views. So I'll pick on the auxiliary view. I'll accept that fold line and drag it off. Notice here, I can go in, if I don't like the double lines, I can go in and say, let's change the properties of here. Let's change it to a single line. And I can reposition these. Likewise, each view has its own properties. So I can go into here and under the caption for that view, I notice that I have AA here and I only want the single A, so I'm just gonna clean that up and say, okay. So very easy edit capabilities here. Let's do a section view. So remember I said to do a section view, you have to go and click the cutting plane first then select the view. Notice this changes me into a, a mini sketcher, if you will. There's my ability to close out of this. So what I can do is I can go in and use my sketching tools and I wanna line up right through that center there. Okay, I can then close the cutting plane. As soon as I do that, it's prompting me for the, a cut side. So I can go in and place this. Now I go and click, this, click on the section plane I grab this and I can move it out. And there's my section view. The detail view. I'll go in, I'll click about here, here, and I can go down and place this here. Notice I can change the scale on the fly or I can change the scale later. 
Notice how this C here is in the way. So I'm just gonna move that up to the side like so. With the principal view, I'm gonna go in and grab this, move that up to create a uh, orthographic view. And then I'm just gonna move that over here. Okay, uh, I wanna make this a little nicer. So I'm gonna go into properties and I'm gonna put on a caption and I'm gonna show all of these here. And what I want is to put in the uh, view scale. So you can see here uh, that view scale is right here. And this VR is the view angle. I don't really care about that. So we can delete that. And I can actually put in second and third line. So I'll go ISO view, for example, and I'll say, okay and it shows my ISO view. Notice every time I click on a view, I get a view bar over here. Notice I can actually go in and click on shading options and I can pick shaded. Now it's got a silver box around it. Whenever you see a silver box, that's, you have to go up and hit update view. So something has changed and it requires an update to put it in there. So now we have a nice shaded view. Now, whatever color this was, it will come out in that color. So again, with our AutoCAD users, I often ask them, how long would it take you to draw that? And there's a day's worth of work. And um, we've done it in mere minutes. Some other things here, let's go into this one here. So I'm gonna go in now and then I can bring in as many different parts on a per sheet or per drawing uh, view that I wish, or view drawing draft file that I wish. I'm going to browse here now and I'm going to select, uh, I got a two meter rod here. And uh, notice I can go and change just the single view. I want to go and change to the uh, front view here or sorry, the right view. I can also go on to the layout and create a custom view. And in the custom view, you can go in and uh, pretty much change things around however you want them at any angle and then uh, close the custom view and say, okay. And this will be your custom view. So if I bring this up to a one-to-one -one scale, you can see that it's uh, pretty much uh, way too big for the sheet. But by doing this, what I can do now is I can actually go in and I can select the view. I can right click and go to broken view, or I can click up here to broken view. And I'm going to pick my break lines. Notice here I have different types. So this is a cylindrical break. So I'm gonna place it say there and we'll say there and then hit finish. And now that fits on there. Now, the nice thing about this is if I go in and do a distance from here to here, this is a two meter rod and you'll notice it or 2000 millimeters, uh, you'll notice it's true to the model. It does not get scaled down. It remembers that that model is a full length of uh, 2000 millimeters. Now I can also go back and edit this, but simply by selecting the view and I can show or hide the, the broken view just by clicking on this that gets added to our view command bar. So that's the broken out view there. Let's have a look at the broken out section view. We're gonna go in again, select our drawing view wizard, go back to browse. And I have a pipe part in here that I'll use for this. So I'll open that up. I'll go to my layout again. First, let's adjust the scale. Then I'll go to my layout and I'll select a front, right and ISO view. And I'll place those there and just move this over to here 
Now to create a broken out section view, you select the command, you select the view that you wanna draw your boundary in. So I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna draw a rectangle by two points, starting at the center up to here. Then I'm gonna close that broken out uh, section view boundary creator. And I'm gonna go in to my right view here and determine the depth. So I wanna go maybe to the midpoint here and I wanna show that here. So you can see very quickly, we've created a, a nice broken out section view here. Now we also have section views in assemblies, but that's done a slightly different way. We actually create that within the assembly and display it on the, on the uh, draft. However, if you wanna just do one for a part, there you go. Now, if you wanna edit this, simply right click on it, go to properties. On the general tab, you're gonna say show broken out section view profiles. And then you can just double click on this and um, it'll take you into the uh, view here to make a change or you can just single click on it and then go into the view this way or change the depth. So for example, I wanna go all the way through and then silver box means click update views and now it's showing you all the way through. And again, I can go hide that boundary simply by turning it off in the, in the properties. So some very nice basic view tools inside of Solid Edge. And in just a few minutes, we've gone in and created uh, this view, this view, and all these views here. So not only are they nice, but they're extremely uh, easy to use and, and fast in generation. Let's go back to our PowerPoint now. And The nice thing about our dimensions is that you don't have to learn anything new uh, for most of them. They're the exact same dimensions that you use elsewhere. Uh, we do have two special ones in here, the chamfer dimension and the retrieve dimension. The chamfer dimension allows you to quickly drop a dimension on a chamfer if you use the chamfer or sorry, some people say I say it wrong or chamfer. In the, in the US, they say chamfer. In the Quebec, they say chamfer. So um, you can go in and place uh, this dimension on a, because uh, it remembers the, that it was made with the chamfer command and you can pull off the dimension from there. The other one is the retrieve dimension. And the retrieve dimension allows you to go and retrieve dimensions that you used in the part or the uh, sheet metal environment or even the assembly but notice here, uh, you have some options, like you can retrieve just linear dimensions, you can retrieve radial or both, angled or all of them. Uh, if you put annotations, uh, if you have multiple, do you wanna retrieve multiple of them and so forth. So it's a handy command for retrieving stuff and I'll show you this in just a minute. Now you can place these the extra part of the dimension, uh, the G, D, and T stuff. You can place that in the part environment. Most people tend to place this at the draft level. So on every dimension, no matter which dimension uh, uh, command you pick, you will see the tolerance bar here. And you can go in and depending on your dimension type, you will be presented with various options here. So for example, if you pick a unit tolerance, you'll be able to put in plus minus. If you pick a class tolerance, you'll be able to go in and type, uh, like, is it um, shaft or whatever. Uh, and so we have various uh, options here, including feature call out. So we can actually call out a, a whole type if you've created a hole, you can uh, have it predefined how these hole types will be printed out, including the number of holes can get listed automatically. And not only can you list the number of holes in the part, but you can list number of holes that are coplanar or on the same plane. And we also have an inspection option.
There's also a few other things like special preview options and that that we just don't have time to go through all today. But this would be all taught in a fundamental class or you can go through the various exercises. For annotations, we do center lines and center marks. We have ballooning, uh, manual ballooning. We also do ballooning in our parts list. We have call outs. So you can call out and access properties of existing parts and sheet metals. You can have surface texture symbols, weld symbols, including um, compound welds. We can create feature control frames, datum frames and target frames, and of course the parts list. Now the parts list, when you've create your very first parts list, you're gonna go on in, you're gonna wanna go into the parts list and set it up. And this is just a format. So you can go in, the most important pro column in here is probably, uh, or tab in here is the columns tab, where you pick the type of properties you want put into the parts list. But uh, once you set up this, you can save it and you can save different formats. And then you can go in <coughs> and create a very, uh, very quickly create a parts list that's associative. So let's bring back Solid Edge. Oops, sorry. There we go. And uh, so, I mean, just to show you some of the dimensioning in here, first of all, as I said, we have all the uh, standard dimension tools. So if I go, for example, distance between I can say I want to use the dimension axis on this one because it's tilted and I want to measure from here to here and then maybe to here and notice it can be chained or stacked and then out to here. And, you know, I want to put in a smart dimension. So I'm going to go in and uh, grab this circle and grab this circle. So something along that line, or, and I, I can do that throughout, or I can go in and say, retrieve dimensions. Now retrieve dimensions will go in and grab me all the dimensions that it can see from this view and place it into the um, draft sheet. Now notice it comes in uh, looking a little disheveled to say the least, but we can go in and move this around now again, most people aren't worrying about what this looks like when they're drawing the, um, creating the uh, model, but it does matter when you're putting into the draft. So very quickly, I can go and move, uh, move this information about. Notice each of these has handles, so you can grab on the individual handles to make changes. And each of these has their own properties, so you can go in and use the properties to make changes as well. There's also the global property setting for dimensions up here, and you can go in and modify all the information you want in your dimensioning. Now, uh, for annotations, as I said, we have quite a few annotations up here, so one of my favorite one is the automatic center marks here and center lines. Uh, you can go in and you can create all the center marks and center lines in a view, but based on this criteria. So for center lines, you only want full cylinders. For center marks, you only want circles. And you can even do um, slots. So I'll just say okay to this and then all I have to do is click on a view and it goes in and places all my center lines and, and center marks. Um, or you can do them individually as well. So that's just a quick quick sneak at some of the uh, sneak peek at some of them. Let's go into this sheet here that we didn't use yet. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to bring in an assembly. going to bring in a top level assembly. Now, in this assembly here, 
what I want to do is I'm going to go to the drawing view wizard options here and I'm going to select a configuration. Now, in, what I've done in this assembly is I've made an exploded configuration and I'm going to bring this in in a slightly less detailed view because it's just going to be used for visualization so I can create it a little bit faster. And I'm going to place it right here. Now I'm going to go up and say parts list. I'm going to select the view and you'll notice it's already generating a list for me. And I have several set up here, so I'm going to go and click on explode it. Now, if I was doing this for the very first time, I would go in here and I would set up my exploded view and I would go in and literally build the format for this, um, for this parts list here. And there's literally hundreds of different options that you can set up, uh, including whether you want piping and framing included, you can control the item numbers and, and how the balloons are gonna be placed. Now, once you've got that set up, you save it, and then you can just grab this every single time, select the view, grab the parts list and go and place it. And it's that fast, okay? Now you'll notice here with the ballooning, um, all our balloons, none of them overlap. We have a sis, uh, system built in here that prevents them from overlapping, okay? And um, you know, these are fully associative. So if there's a change, this changes as well. So very quick and rapid parts list creation, very reliable, I should say as well. Couple little tricks here. If I go in and do another detailed view, I'm gonna create a square shape here onto this view. And I'm gonna go in and just draw my shape that I want. So I'll go something like this. Doesn't even have to be a square. It can be an odd shape and down onto the end point there. And then I wanna place that down here. Now, here's the power of Solid Edge. I'm going to move that down to here and hit Update View. You can see it's already changed, but I want to lock it in. So I can hit Update View, and it automatically changes the view for me. I can also now go in and manually create a balloon and say, I want this related to the existing parts list, and I want to get the number and the occurrence or the quantity. I can click on there and you can see that number five here is my lower die shoe and I have one of them. So you can do some pretty amazing stuff with our parts list as well. So again, in probably a total modeling time of about 15 minutes here, I've gone in and created all these views, including in a fairly intelligent parts list. Now, I just want to talk a little bit about the difference between profile versus drafting dimensions. Uh, a profile dimension or a sketch dimension is a driving, usually it's a driving dimension. In other words, you can go in, enter a dimension, and it changes the model. Drafting dimensions are always driven dimensions. You cannot change the model from the draft. So if you notice there's something changed or something that's incorrect in the draft, you have to edit back into the model to change it. So to do that, all you have to do is double click on the view and it will open the, the model of that view. If this view happens to be an assembly, it will open up the assembly and then you can double click onto the part to get into the one that you need to change. So a simple double click and takes you back into here and then you can edit this. And once you return to the draft, you will be greeted with the silver box to update it. So let's bring back our solid edge here. And um, we'll have a look at this example. So you'll notice down here, I've got this dimensioned at eight. And if I, click on this, it shows me the dimension. If I do a double click, it'll actually um, bring up 
the um, little box here. Oh, sorry, not a double click. That put me into expressions. Let's do that again. So two clicks instead of a quick double click. And if I try to change this, if I say seven and I hit enter, it'll change it. But notice it's underlined it. Underline means not to scale. The dreaded NTS. So um, we don't recommend that you use this, although it is there. Uh, you don't really want this uh, underline here. So let's um, put that dimension back. So let's say I realized that this should have been seven. So what I can do is I can go pick my select tool, double click on the view, and it'll open up the model for me. And I'm gonna highlight this here. So this was created with this cutout. So I'm gonna go in and do a dynamic edit and change this to seven. And let's change this to seven as well. Okay. Now, just to show the intelligence of Solid Edge, normally I would hit save, but I'm not even gonna save this yet. I'm gonna go back to my draft and you'll notice it's telling me it's out of date and it's put silver boxes around here. So if I hit update view, it'll go in and update the view. Now, there is an option inside Solid Edge to track these changes. And uh, so if we go and look at our tools here, the, uh, this is track dimension changes and you have to go into there and turn these on and you can even say label them. So uh, in this case, it's created a report. If I wish, I can copy this report, go and grab my text box uh, here, place this down here, and then go Control V and print that report inside of here. So there's my revision notes. Now, obviously I wanna format this a little bit, spread it out maybe, um, or, you know, do whatever is necessary to make it uh, readable. But um, inside the text box, you have text size control. Um, so let's change this maybe to two. And you have uh, different color control, fonts, bullets, uh, this type of stuff. So you can go in and make many changes to the system here. Um, so there's the, uh, that's how you go in and make edits uh, to the model. We do not, it, to be honest, initially when Solid Edge first came out, you could change this value and change the model, but with the, the PDM restrictions now and the data management restrictions, it just creates too much of a nightmare. So it's a lot simpler just to leave the model as the driver. And that's the way it works. Let's go back to our slide deck here. Now, once you've learned all the annotations and dimensionings, you probably won't need this that often, but every now and then you may want to add something to a uh, drawing view that is not, um, it's, it, Literally, you wanna physically go in and draw something on this view. Uh, let's say you wanna create a hash mark or something like that. The one thing I strongly recommend you do is go in and use draw in view. So you right click on the view, you wanna add something, physically add something to and click draw in view. And what this does, it allows you to go in and draw in the view, but it draws it at the view scale. So it honors the view scaling. And um, this is critical uh, if you wanna get accurate dimensions off of, let's say for example, you drew a, a line going through here and you wanna get dimensions. If you want it to be accurate to the model, you have to use draw and view. Like I said, we don't use this too often, but it's one of those sort of fail safe uh, commands, very handy to have. So I like to point that out, especially to new people they may not know how to do some of the advanced commands, so they'll just go in and draw it. That's fine, make sure you use draw and view. 
So that's about everything I'm gonna have to show you from the fundamental course, but I threw this last demo in here because um, it's probably, I've seen the most excitement at our annual conventions when people uh, first saw this. This was introduced about four releases ago and it got a standing ovation um, from over 500 engineers that were gathered to look at this, uh, what was new in that release. And Ricky Black, the developer of our draft was showing this and, and literally got a standing ovation. That's how impressed people were with this. So let's bring this back in and uh, let me um, get out of here. And we'll get out of here as well. And I'm gonna open up a new draft or another draft part to match what I had on the screen there, which is this fella right here. And you'll notice here we have three different views. So this new command or relatively new command allows me to go in and organize the dimensions. So these may have been brought in by retrieved dimensions or I just threw them on there real quick. So I can go in and I can do this several ways. I can go in and select a bunch of these dimensions individually and accept them and you'll see that it automatically aligns here. The stack pitch is controlled in the dimension uh, properties. So by simply selecting them and accepting them, it automatically organizes it. Here's a situation down here. I can also do a window select of the dimensions and accept it. And you see how clean and nice that looks. Or probably my favorite is I can click on the view and accept it and it cleans it up very nicely. So three clicks and uh, pretty much three clicks, a window or three clicks there, a window drag here and a single click here. And we've cleaned this up, made it uh, look a lot nicer. So if we go back to our PowerPoint, you can see I went from here to here in mere seconds and just, uh, a much better looking draft file. So we have other tools to control, organize, and even align uh, annotations, for example, and notes, uh, which we teach in our fundamental course or our two-day draft course. So here is our link page. And on the link page here, uh, we have the here there's a detail and drawing tutorial that's quite nice and then of course there's the self-paced training draft course that you can try out and again don't forget to check out our youtube channel and our blog and just a reminder you can go in and, and send your any questions you have to support at designfusion.com if you're one of our customers um, this is our last session. So just before I open it up to questions, I wanna thank you for all for attending this webinar series. I hope it's been informative and uh, hope you've gotten a lot out of it. The replays are available at this link here, which I showed you earlier. This one will hasn't been put up yet. It'll probably be up by the end of the day or Monday morning at the latest. And uh, this is our first time to run something of this nature. Uh, I believe next week, uh, my colleague Manny Marquez will be doing the same thing, but for the NX CAD people. Um, but we do want to hear some feedback if we can. What do you like about it? What didn't you like about it even? And um, so if you go to this link here, it's on the bottom of the uh, where this page here. And it just pops up a blank sheet and allows you to type whatever you want. We're not going to run you through 20 questions to try to weed out what we're looking for. We just want you to go in and type what you thought of this. If you enjoyed them, uh, please let us know. And uh, as I said, we're experimenting with this online stuff and we want to see how uh, it, it appeals to our customer base. Even if you're not our customer, you belong to another reseller, by all means, go in and tell us what you think. So with that, uh, let's open it up for any questions. Um, 
feel free to unmute your mic and ask away. No questions today? Well, that's good. Hopefully it shows that uh, either you already knew all this stuff or you've learned a lot of stuff and I've explained it clearly. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I uh, just want to thank you for joining I us. I have one question. Okay, go ahead. The uh, range dimensions, does that work with the coordinate dimensioning scheme? Uh, what do you mean by range dimensioning? The uh, range. Oh, a range. Where it cleans up the dimensions for you. There are a yeah, few. Yeah, there are a few that um, uh, I believe the coordinate, the linear coordinate. I think it works there now, um, not the angle coordinate. There initially they didn't do the coordinates, but I think they've added it in the recent release. Uh, but there's also the automatic coordinate, which um, you, when you're doing coordinate dimensioning, you want to go in and check your style because there's a couple of things. If you don't want the coordinates to overlay on each other, you can set that up. Let's say, for example, using the ANSI style. If you go into the, um, where is it now? Right here under lines and coordinates. So we have some uh, under the coordinate here, so you can um, allow, or let's see, uh, the different options in here. So enable automatic jogging is what you wanna turn on. And that'll prevent the systems from, uh, uh, from system from putting uh, coordinate dimensions on top of each other. Okay, so okay, cool. you know, in the alignment, if you turn that on, that's gonna make it so they don't overlap. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay, so let's go back to this page. I'm gonna leave this up for another minute and I'll stay on the line for another couple of minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, again, this will be posted shortly and along with the links, but I'll leave this up for a couple of minutes in case somebody wants to grab a screenshot of it. 